Chapter 1. Children do not respond positively to parenting styles that do not let them have a sense of control. From a young age, children need to learn control. They need to be allowed to make mistakes and learn from these mistakes. This summary explores the problem that families face, combines experimental evidence and coaching, and provides a guide for parenting. It also aims to empower parents with the necessary tools for building the right traits in their children. Through research on stress and motivation, Stixrod and Johnson realized that a perceived sense of control is a significant determinant of a child's development. They realized that a child with a low sense of control can become stressed and unwilling to do any assigned task. Conversely, when children have a healthy sense of control, they develop in many areas of their lives, such as their autonomy, the ability to make an informed decision, and motivation. Recent studies have shown that college and high school students now have a lower internal locus of control and higher external locus of control, which means that they believe less in their ability to control their lives and more in external forces that determine destiny. There has also been an increase in levels of anxiety and depression, making them anxious and leading to anger management issues. Generally, people perform better when they have control over events or believe they can change. When kids do not have a healthy sense of control, it is hard for them to make decisions because they feel powerless. You can't control your kids. Instead, focus on teaching them how to do things and think on their own. This will help them succeed in life. Children have brains and should be allowed the freedom to use them. They only need support from you. They also need respect and space to understand their tasks. So whether you're a parent, teacher, counselor, or someone who wants to learn what's best for children, this summary is for you. Chapter 2. Stressful situations are almost unavoidable, but you can teach your children to handle them effectively. Chronic stress harms the brain, especially the brains of young children. Also, the rates of illness caused by stress are at an all-time high. And several pieces of research show that depression is now the leading cause of disability worldwide. You might be wondering what sense of control had to do with depression and stress. The answer is everything. According to Sonia Lupien, a researcher at the Center for Studies on Human Stress, stress is caused by Novelty, a new experience Unpredictability, something you have no idea would occur or not A threat to the ego, if your safety or competence is questioned Sense of control, when you think you have no control When a person feels they have control over a situation, they feel less stressed, and this is why some people are more comfortable when they are driving than flying. It also explains why traffic jams are so annoying. Kids often argue that they can do their daily tasks by themselves because they want to control that activity. You should let them do these tasks. This way, they get to do the important things without any fuss. Put yourself in your children's shoes. They have to do everything you tell them. Children are also not measured by the effort they put into their work, but by the success of other kids, which can be stressful for them. When children have a perceived control of their lives, they have better appetites and physical health and more positive mental health. It is impossible to protect your child from every stressful event. The aim is to help them learn how to deal successfully with stressful situations. This is how children can develop resilience. There are three kinds of stress. Positive stress. This motivates people to perform better. Example, nervousness before an exam or a game. Tolerable stress occurs briefly and builds resilience. The children have support from their family. Example, the death of a pet. Toxic stress. Frequent and prolonged with the absence of support. Example, witnessing assault several times without the intervention of loved ones. Children always need supportive adults around. With time, they will recover and have a sense of control. Chapter 3. If your children see you as a dictator, you'll hardly be able to communicate with them. Most kids do not hate homework. What they hate is the constant pressure from their parents. When a parent keeps forcing a child to do their homework, it sounds like they know what is best and the child doesn't. Most children then try to assert their identity by not doing the homework at all. Loving parents see their child's capabilities and how their pressure to work hard in school will make their kids successful. This shows parents good intentions, but it is a path to failure. The more you try to overcome your children, the more they need to be pushed because they didn't develop internal motivation. Instead of thinking of yourself as the infallible parent, think of yourself as a consultant. Consultants give advice, communicate with their clients, and are committed to their clients' goals. 
As a parent, your first instinct is to protect your child, but your child is also a person, and you need to acknowledge this. You need to realize that the things you fuss about are not always about you. Trying to get your kids to do things you think are best will only ruin your relationship and waste time. You cannot force your children to do something against their will. Sometimes you can stop kids from doing things by physically restraining them, threatening them, or by motivating and trying to win their cooperation. But you cannot force them. When you come to peace with this reality, you can take some pressure off. People think the only two types of parenting are autocratic, extremely strict, and permissive, fulfill all their children's desires. Still, there is a third type, authoritative parenting. Supportive but not controlling, which is the most effective approach to parenting. Instead of asking, do you have homework tonight? Ask, is there anything you'd like me to help with this evening? The brain develops according to how it is used. When you give children the chance to make their own decisions, you are allowing their brains the opportunity to build the pathways necessary for resilience during stress. The parent-consultant model can take some time to get used to, but it's worthwhile. Chapter 4 Children can adapt easily to whatever mood you bring to the room. It's normal to get anxious when your kids are trying out new things. Research shows that while parents have worried about their children's safety for a long time, it is worse now because of all the information that is available to us these days. You need to understand that your anxiety can rub off on your children. Studies show that when you can manage your stress, your parenting is more effective. Some children are not bothered by the stress stimuli around them, while others are quite sensitive to it. Anxiety is hereditary, and up to 50% of children who have anxious parents have anxiety disorders. One way that parents pass their anxiety to their children is through epigenetics, the way some genes are turned off and on by some experiences. So even though a child may be born with some genetic predisposition, they need to experience some events to turn the genes on. Problematic genes are passed on in two ways. Secondhand stress. Some people just make everything appear more difficult. It's easy to catch stress like a virus, a concept also referred to as stress contagion. Secondhand stress can last more than personal stress. It can also affect a child's genes in the womb by permanently turning the stress response gene on. Behavior You can turn your child's anxiety genes on through your behavior. A study done by John Hopkins researchers showed that if you avoid certain behaviors, you can prevent the stimulation of those genes. On the flip side, your children can mirror your calmness. When you're not unduly anxious or worried about something, you exude a non-anxious presence. The term was discovered by Edwin Friedman, a student of complex systems, a rabbi, and a consultant. Friedman propounded that it is best for children when parents are sincere and are not unnecessarily worried. Also, remember that it is your child's life, after all. You need to let them learn how to manage discomfort. You can be a non-anxious parent by handling stress properly. Simply enjoy your kids instead of focusing on being a parent. Also, do not overthink the future, but try to enjoy each moment. Not all your fears are valid, and you should make peace with that. Chapter 5. When a child is self-motivated, they confront tasks with a can-do attitude. Children need self-motivation that will help them through the long term. Research shows that frequently rewarding your kids for doing the things you want them to do can be damaging. Motivation has four major ingredients. The first one is the right mindset. Popular psychologist Carol Dweck proposed that when children have a fixed mindset, they believe that their errors are a result of their inability to do the given task. Conversely, when they have a growth mindset, they understand that they are in control and can get better if they try. A growth mindset means the child is focused on learning instead of getting rewards. As a parent, you can promote the growth mindset by praising your children's effort instead of concentrating on their ability. The second ingredient that forms motivation is a combination of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Studies show that for a child to be motivated, they need to have a sense of control, autonomy. Competence is the feeling that we can succeed even though we may not be perfect in that skill. Lastly, relatedness is the feeling of connection to others. These three needs need to be satisfied to build motivation in your child. Dopamine, a neurotransmitter in the brain that energizes and stimulates it for further tasks, is also a vital component of motivation. The brain has a reward system that is fueled by dopamine. You can encourage dopamine production by urging your kids to do the things they love. When your children do the things they love, they enter a state referred to as flow. 
In this state, they don't care about the time spent and they remain connected to the task at hand. But at the same time, they are not stressed. Children are different and it is unfair to control or compare them. Understand that men and women process dopamine differently. Girls have more empathy and are more interested in school, so their dopamine levels usually begin earlier and stay longer than boys' levels. Kids might also have mental health conditions that prevent them from concentrating or staying motivated. Chapter 6. Your body needs adequate rest to function optimally. When you rest, you give your body time to recover. The brain also needs complete rest, radical downtime. Our culture does not encourage rest as there's always something to do. Radical downtime does not mean watching movies or texting. It means doing nothing purposefully. It allows you to process information and think of many activities in your brain. You need to alternate periods of activity with periods of radical downtime. You can do this while waiting for your order at a restaurant or dental appointment. Allow your kids to do nothing. Their day doesn't have to be filled with lots of activities for them to be successful. When you have to make decisions about your kids' lives, you don't need to decide things that they can decide for themselves. William Stixrod, Ph.D., and Ned Johnson. Meditation is a good way to relax your mind and manage anxiety. Research shows that when children meditate frequently, they experience the same benefits as adults do. An important form of meditation for children and adolescents is mindfulness. A scientist named John Kabat-Zinn defines mindfulness as paying rapt attention in a specific way. Purposefully, in the moment, and without judgment, all you need to do is monitor your thoughts and reactions. Another form of meditation is transcendental meditation. Here, meditators are given a mantra, which is a sound that has no meaning. When a person repeats this mantra, the mind calms down and evokes a new level of awareness. In the end, the meditator is led by the mantra to a peaceful place in their mind. Kids who meditate often will experience reduced stress and reduction in symptoms of many mental health conditions. With the existence of electricity and technology, people are getting less sleep, and sleep deprivation is becoming a huge problem. Without sleep, you're in for some serious health troubles. First, your sense of control is weakened. Next, you're tired and it's hard for you to do your job. Not getting enough sleep is a type of chronic stress. Research shows that sleep deprivation has similar effects on the body as chronic stress. When you've rested, the connection between your brain and other systems is strengthened. If your child has trouble falling asleep, negotiate gently with them. Create a routine and ensure they are in a dark or semi-dark room when it's time to sleep. Chapter 7. There's more to education than grades and classrooms. Many kids struggle through school. In recent times, it's hard for teachers to do their jobs and for students to learn. There's so much homework to be done and teachers do not have as much autonomy as they used to. School policies also fail because they do not increase the sense of control of the students and everyone involved in the process. It is important to get children engaged in the classroom by giving them autonomy outside it. You can do this by making choices available to them instead of just telling them what to do. Test scores are never a true representation of brilliance. William Stixrud, Ph.D. As a parent, emphasize that your children are responsible for their education. Help them plan their schedules so they can control their learning. Encourage them to learn on their own and teach what they have learned to someone around them. It's easy for your child's school to become toxic to them. Sometimes they're just tired of all the homework they have to do. When a child is tired, they can't achieve much. This also leads to tension in the moment and a reduction of happy moments. Teachers should inspire children to learn outside the classroom, but not require them to or grade them. Encourage them by explaining the benefits of homework. While the school system has changed, students are still the same. Choose schools that care about your children's development and craft a suitable curriculum. Don't freak out if your child is not doing as much as you expect because rushing their development is counterproductive in the end. Schools need to focus more on building healthy brain development than on scores and tests. If schools and parents rely too much on standardized testing, they'll miss out on the other amazing skills their children have. Testing stresses teachers, students, and parents. It's understandable that students are happier in classes that do not require grades. There should be more emphasis on a healthy learning environment, motivation, and autonomy. Did you know? Finnish students have one of the highest educational outcomes in the world and the fewest homework requirements. Chapter 8. 
The effects of technology can be disastrous if you do not set boundaries for your kids. With the evolution of technology, children are now spending more time on their devices. It's even harder for parents to control this because they don't always know everything about these devices. Research shows that the more time a person spends on a smartphone, the more susceptible they are to physical, mental, and other health problems. Social media also takes control away from a child and allows others online to make decisions for them. It is possible to help your child through a raging technology addiction. You need to recognize that you, too, may have a bad habit. Start by being a good model for them. Educate your kids about the struggle with devices and allow them to call you out when you get engrossed in your texting. You can also try to understand why your children are so engrossed in their social media apps. This way, you can help them when it is necessary. Also, it's helpful to take your children on a trip somewhere close to Mother Earth. Give them the opportunity to experience Mother Nature. It's crucial to make an effort to be more present with your kids. Finally, you need to work with your child on everything. It's their life and you're just a helper. Inform them rather than give a boring lecture. Also, as a parent, you have some leverage. You can determine when to give them a phone. Let them know that you know their passwords. Buy an alarm clock instead of a phone for an alarm. And let them know that some benefits depend on their wise use of technology. Chapter 9. Just like your body, your brain needs regular exercise. The brain needs to be exercised regularly to enable its proper functioning. But many children are not taught how to do this. Some techniques can strengthen brain health and are effective for children. The first exercise is to teach them how to set clear goals for themselves. It can be a simple list or a pictorial reference. If a child doesn't like arranging their room, you can make them take a picture of a clean room and use it for motivation when they don't want to clean up. Another important exercise for kids is for them to pay attention to what is going on in their minds. When a kid understands their thoughts, they have more control over their behavior. Child psychiatrist Daniel Siegel uses a trick to explain emotions to children. He asks them to close four fingers over their thumbs. The thumb represents their emotions, and the fingers are the parts of the brain that help them think and solve problems. When a child's emotions are getting too big, they flip the lid and open their palm. Siegel encourages them to go to a designated spot to cool down and get their fists to close again. Instead of letting your child follow just one thought process, another good mental exercise is to encourage them to have plan B thinking to help them bounce back after a setback. Ask them to think of another plan in case the original one doesn't work out. Share your experiences with your children and reassure them of their awesomeness. When children see that you, too, are not perfect, it'll help reduce their negative self-talk. Children can strengthen their brains through play. Allow them to play with others and on their own and see how they'll grow. Children don't always have to do something useful. Allow them to find themselves by letting them play. Chapter 10. A child can develop a sense of control amidst learning disabilities and other mental health disorders. Parents who have children with learning disabilities, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, or autism spectrum disorders find it hard to help their children develop a healthy sense of control. Sometimes their treatments make it hard for the children to develop autonomy. Research shows that having structure and an external motivational system works best and helps kids with autism or ADHD to do their tasks efficiently. Children with learning difficulties find it hard to hide it in public spaces. They worry that they will be teased or judged for their condition. Most of them need specialists to help them with their learning difficulties. But when they feel it is being forced on them, they begin to resist and lose their sense of control, leading to friction and many tantrums. You can help your child through this by fighting homework that's unnecessary, encouraging them to understand themselves, and offering help but not forcing it. Children with ADHD have issues with controlling their attention. It's hard for children with ADHD to do their assigned tasks because they have low levels of the hormone dopamine, which makes them less likely to work for things. Remind them that it'll get better and make them see the reasons for all the help you're giving. Children with autism spectrum disorders struggle with rigidity, self-motivation, and stress tolerance and benefit from programs that encourage their sense of control and reduce stress. Parents need to be attentive to their children's preferences and help them channel their energy into what makes them feel better. Did you know, 6.5 million children received special education services between 2013 and 2014. Conclusion 
it is hard to give your children some sense of control. We always want them to make the right decisions, so it is hard to simply trust them to choose good options. But you need to. Trust their development and decide to ignore the many external pressures that exist. You need to understand that it takes humility, courage, and a positive mindset to be a good parent. You don't want your children calling you every hour in their adult life to help them fix a problem. You want them equipped enough to solve dilemmas themselves. Therefore, it is important to help them develop a sense of control. Your children will always remember how they feel around you. It is up to you to create a healthy environment for them. Sometimes you need to have discussions with your child's school and even other family members. Do it. Your child can benefit a lot more when everyone is concerned about their growth. Finally, having a child with a mental health condition or learning disability is not a curse. Offer help, but do not force it. Work with their specialists to develop a routine that encourages their sense of control and stress tolerance. You can do it. You can raise a self-driven child. Try this. Have a talk with your child and try to understand what they do not like about school. Then try to see how you can fix it with the school's help. Also, take note of all the ways you stress your children and try to work on reducing stress on yourself as well.